Hi guys! Have you ever been painting a picture of an animal or reading a book of an animal and suddenly there's a wild animal in front of you posing, pausing, and saying, take my picture? Well, this happened to me yesterday as I was painting my little red fox and so I just happened to have my iPad with me. I whooped it out and took some footage which I will include in this video. And I will bet that you can't guess what kind of animal this is because it's not the traditional animal that people normally talk about. Can you guess it before I reveal it? We will see. Okay, so this is Patreon content and this is designed for the beginner. It is about an hour and 20 minutes to paint a picture entirely. Many people are a little bit worried about, oh, I can't paint, but actually you can paint. This particular fox is very easy to paint. Many people are worried, oh, it has fade or legs. Well, this has no feet, no legs. The only possible area of concern could be the nose, eyes, jawline, and fur. However, for this particular painting, I am giving you the outline of the fox. You can transfer it to the canvas. I am showing you my palette. As I am painting, I am showing you the brushes, the strokes, explaining the color theory as we're going, so everybody, including the beginner, can paint this picture. Okay, so let's talk about the materials that we need to paint this. When I am choosing colors for my painting, there's two big values that I have, and one of them is I would like to have a simple color palette. I don't want a lot of colors, but I want you know, a few colors that will blend very well. And that's my second one. I want the harmony of colors. So here in front of us, I have chosen five colors, plus I have white, and I did have Mars black also, but that was only for putting a little bit of black around the eyes. With these particular colors, I couldn't blend to make a really dark black, and so that's why I went to the Mars black. So here I have five colors. They blend beautifully. I tested them out and they have a very woodsy, foresty kind of look, and that is what I'm looking for in my fox painting. Also, I do want to have very nice brushes, but I don't want to have a lot. So here I have one flat and one angle, different sizes, and then three smaller brushes for getting the detail. And I'm very big on getting detail, but I teach that. And if you want the pupil of the eye or those small little bits of hair, then you will need a few smaller brushes. Okay, so here I have a little painting tip. I'm traveling right now and I didn't bring my acrylic palette with me and so I needed something. Sometimes I can use a paper plate, but I found this plastic cutting board works beautifully. It's light, it's flexible, I can hold it well. It's really awesome. Let's talk about how we use water with acrylic. Now, acrylic is not something that we use a lot of water with. So you just saw me put my tip of the brush into the water cup and then I tapped it on the palette. What I am doing is I am adding a little bit of carrier fluid so that the, the acrylic will flow on the dry canvas and with the dry brush. So if it's too dry, the, those colors aren't going to flow easily. And right now I'm putting on a glaze for the background and I do need a little bit of carrier fluid. So I tap out the extra water because if I put too much water on that palette and it transfers to the canvas, it's going to be runny and I'm not going to have good adhesion to the canvas. So you'll see me right here. I am putting a lot of blue around the outskirts or the outer part of the fox. And the reason for this, I'm planning ahead. My fox is going to be orange, and if I want that fox to be popped in color, what I need to put beside it, beside that orange, is a color that's going to bring the color forward. And blue and orange are opposites. And that blue is going to pop the orange, orange will pop, pop the blue, and next to that blue I can have my foresty colors. So you see me here, I'm putting in the background, adding those blurs of color, those blurs, by the way, are vertical, more or less vertical. And then when I paint the foliage on top, I'm going to have it kind of horizontal or different textures. 
that will create interest with the vertical kind of lines in the background. To texture that background, I am using that one inch flat brush. I take the tip of that brush and dab it into various colors of paint. Each time that paint load is different, sometimes there's more pigment on it and sometimes less. And I'm using a different variety of strokes, sometimes longer strokes and sometimes shorter strokes. So you can see that I'm putting some of the lighter colors at the top, like there's light reflecting in the canopy of the woods or the forest above. And then I'm working my way to some of the darker colors at the bottom. So it has more of a woodsy feeling. Then I dab on some of my lighter colors like yellows, a little bit orange or white, and that kind of gives it a 3D dimensional look. And it's really simple. It's like a forest above and around our little fox. And then it's time to paint our fox. So I am first of all blocking in the colors. And so you see that I'm going very slowly and patiently trying to get an idea of, you know, where those dark lines and where the lighter lines are going to be. You'll also notice that I'm not painting the fox with a traditional orange because if I start with orange and I put orange on top, you won't see any kind of variation of color. So either we need to use a darker color or a lighter color, but to start with an orange, you're not going to have a very interesting image. Okay, so here I've blocked in several different colors and you can see that I retained white in just a few places, mainly the eyes, the nose, and there's a very thin line along the jaw. Oh my goodness, this is the moment when I see that animal. And it is a, aw, it's a baby woodchuck. Actually, it's not so young anymore. It's about the size of its mother. This is the little animal that we like to see on February 2, because if you see it, you know that winter is only going to last six more weeks. But I will tell you, in the countryside, we do not like to see these little guys, because in the summertime, if you see them, you know that for the next six, eight, 12 weeks, these little guys are gonna be gnawing at your garden, eating more probably than you. Yeah, but they are cute. We've got several around, oh my goodness. Okay, so I got really tired of using my reference far away and reactivating my iPad, so I moved it close by and I'm a little nervous because I don't have a protector lens on it just yet. But anyway, we will continue. So here you can see that I have my reference beside me and I am continuing to block in those colors. You will also see that I'm using the smallest brush right now. This is the size zero. And with the size zero, I can get the finest detail. Well, actually I can go finer with zero zero or zero zero zero, which I don't really use for this painting. But here you can see that I can get eye details, pupil details, I can get fur and texture. And when you're using this kind of brush, you know that you are in some of the final stages. So we like to use the larger brushes first and then end with our detailers. To wrap up our painting, we need to still paint in that foreground. And that foreground needs to be you know, brighter than our background because we want to give it a sense of dimension and bring it close to us. And so I am creating kind of a sea green. Now that sea green is gonna cover up the white and it's brighter than the blue sky in the background, so we have the sense of dimensionality. So I don't have to cover up all of the white, I can cover up most of it, and then I'm gonna let the grass blades do the rest. So once I get that blocked in, then I'm going to put in streaks of color with different pigment levels and different colors on those on that brush and create the grass blades. Now sometimes my grass blades might have green, other times it will have the yellow oxide, and sometimes it will even have the red oxide, and blue also. One thing I didn't show you or tell you about in this little tutorial is that I also paint the sides of my canvases when I, whenever I'm painting an acrylic canvas, not just a flat paper. 
So, you know, you hang the canvas on the wall and people look at it from different angles. It's really nice when a painting wraps around on the sides. And so I didn't show that here, but I would strongly recommend that you do the same. So it just creates a lot more interest when you are looking at it from various angles. So this concludes how I'm going to be teaching this particular painting in Patreon. But maybe you're also interested in other aspects of color theory. So if you are, I have a painting called Painting a Green Lizard Color Theory, and it is specifically about analogous color, something that I didn't mention in this particular painting. So if you would like to go check that out and learn more about color theory, yes, I think you'll enjoy it.